Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we prepare to offer to Almighty God our morning sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, let us call to mind our sins and ask the Father's forgiveness, for full of gentleness and compassion. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask, blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
us pray. O Lord, show favor to your servants and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, faith and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you who have the care of all, that you need show you have not unjustly condemned, for your might is the source of justice, your mastery over all things make you lenient to all. For you show your might when the perfection of your power is disbelieved, and in those who know you, you rebuke temerity. But though you are master of might, you judge with clemency, and with much lenience you govern us. For power, whenever you will, attends you, and you taught your people by these deeds that those who are just must be kind, and you gave your children good ground for hope that you would permit repentance for their sins. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to aid of our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy One according to God's will. The word of the Lord.
proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus proposed another parable to the crowds, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be likened to a man who sowed good seed in his field. While everyone was asleep, his enemy came and sowed weeds all through the wheat and then went off. When the crop grew and bore fruit, the weeds appeared as well. The slaves of the householder came to him and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where have the weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. His slaves said to him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? He replied, No. If you pulled up the weeds, you might uproot the wheat along with them. Let them grow together until harvest. Then at harvest time, I will say to the harvesters, First collect the weeds and tie them in bundles for burning, but gather the wheat into my barn. He proposed another parable to them. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that a person took and sowed in a field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, yet when full grown, it is the largest of plants. It becomes a large bush, and the birds of the sky come and dwell in its branches. He spoke to them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of wheat flour until the whole batch was leavened. All these things Jesus spoke to the crowds in parables. He spoke to them only in parables to fulfill what had been said through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. I will announce what was laid hidden from the foundation of the world. Then dismissing the crowds, he went into the house. His disciples approached him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He said in reply, He who sows a good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, the children of, king, of the kingdom. The weeds are the children of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the harvesters are angels. Just as weeds are collected and burned up with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will collect, they will collect out of his kingdom all who cause others to sin and all evildoers. They will be thrown into the fiery furnace where they will be wailing and grinding of thick teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father, whoever has ears ought to hear the gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and my dear sisters in Christ, there is the matter of things as they are, and then there are the matter of things as they ought to be, and there is wisdom. It is wisdom to know the difference between things as they are and things as they ought to be. We come into this house as Catholics, we're supposed to walk with purpose. We ought to walk with purpose. And we come here for one purpose and one purpose only, communion with God. To be united with him in mind, in heart, and purpose. It is everything that we do. But is that the case? That's the question. And what today's parable of the weeds lay out, each time the people of God assembles before him, his people are of two minds. They're the weeds, and they're the weeds. And how did we get to this particular point? Today's first reading, the matter of justice and judgment. There are those who come to God with good intentions, but there are some who come simply to sit in judgment, to sit with judgment of God, of his power, of his wisdom, his counsel, his grace. They come to sit in judgment at how he orders his house, the discipline of his house. They come to stand in judgment of God's word. And that's 
the centerpiece today, the matter of God's word, and who stands in judgment of it. We stand in judgment, but there is the matter of a problem, because in the Gospel of John, Jesus reminds us, I came to save, not to condemn the world, but to save it. What condemns, it's not him, but the word. And therefore, when we stand in judgment of God's word, there is a reciprocal judgment going on. We sit in judgment of God's word, and God's word sit in judgment of us. And therefore, the big question, in this movement of judgment between us and God, whose judgment will prevail? I have my bets, I place my bets, and I know his will prevail. We may bring the brightest and smartest that the world has to offer, but I know the judgment of God will prevail. I must make the case for God's word sitting in judgment of us, because this parable that we have in front of us is a continuation of what we had last week. They each can stand on their own and give us God's wisdom and his counsel, but a greater light is seen when we connect them together and it's quite a different vision. And therefore, I would like to do that today on the word. Last week's, the parable was the parable of a sower. And there, what God and Christ lays out in the parable of the sower was the character, his judgment on the heart and character of humanity. Specifically today, the heart and character of his people. There is the case, there was the case, of where the word was sown and it was sown along the pathway. Nothing came of it. Watch the character. The word of God summons us to vigilance and watchfulness. But the wayside, the seed that fell by the wayside, as Catholics at times were negligent, were reckless and careless with God's counsel and his word. And therefore, in our recklessness, in our carelessness, in our negligence, the little that we have was taken away, will be taken away. The word of God said in judgment, we've been weighed, we've been measured, and we should not be found wanting. We should not be negligent and careless in the matter of our faith. Second character, the word of God is sown. And there was the question of the, son, the, stony, the, stony, the stony ground. The word of God asks us for a particular heart and particular disposition. Broken heart, contrite spirit, humbled. That's the heart that God takes pleasure in. But his people, and his world, my, how stubborn and rebellious we can be. We believe in our own righteousness and believe that our righteousness supersedes that of God's, that we can sit in judgment of him and his word, that our words, our righteousness, has everything in it of justice, righteousness, goodness, holiness. His word is nothing compared to ours. We've been judged, we've been weighed, we've been measured, and we should not be found wanting. Our hearts should not be rebellious, we should not be so stubborn. The third, the one where thorns or the side or the seed falling among thorns. Watch the word, the word covet. We've been called upon the word not to covet the things of the world, the riches and honor and esteem of the world. They are deceiving. Be not deceived. Yet, continually, this is what we do. 
we place much more value, a much greater weight on worldly riches, worldly esteem, and worldly honor than we do in the Word of God. And therefore, in our busyness and occupation with the cares of the world, our faith is stifled and we strangle it. It's a thorn, as a consequence, what we have, the little we have, is being taken away. We've been judged, we've been weighed, we've been measured, and we should not be found wanting. The good soil, man, who sees the insufficiency of his own righteousness. As God lays out, this is the man in whom I take pleasure, the man who knows that it is I who will bring about justice, kindness in this world. The man in whom I take pleasure is the man who trembles at my word. And this man grows fruits, hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, he bears fruit because he receives the word of God as it is. It is the word of God. Therefore, on this matter of us sitting in judgment of God's word, where is the poverty and the deficiency? Is it in our character and heart or is it in the word of God? And today sacred scripture reveals that's not the case. There is no deficiency and poverty on the part of God. The deficiency and poverty is on our part. And each time, therefore, we gather in God's house, we have two minds. This church is made up of saints and sinners, sheep and goats, wheat and weeds. And each of us must look to ourselves and ask, which one are we? I cannot leave and be remiss in my duty to talk about this matter of today's second reading, prayer. Because prayer is one of the great manifestations of the fruitfulness of God's word in our hearts and our souls. Prayer, one of the most useful. Inasmuch as air and oxygen is important to the natural life, so is prayer to the spiritual life. And as much as a man who would die without air, a man who does not pray, has no love for prayer, there is no life in him. The life of God is not in him. This is our most important duty. But God lays down today that at times as Catholics what we do is we groan in prayer. I'm not talking about the man who in his cares for the world find prayer as an obstacle, an annoyance to his pursuit of his worldly pursuits. I'm talking about that faithful Catholic who try and strive, but yet struggles with that prayer life, can't seem to find the words to make expression, can't seem to do it right. And God reminds us today, be comforted. We grow because as today's gospel points out, the things that we're concerned about in prayer are things laying hidden from the foundations of the world. We are about great mysteries of life, of death, of God, of ourselves, of our destiny. These are great things and weighty matters. And if we find ourselves without words of expression, it is natural because we pour in spirit. We have poverty of words to express this great mysteries that God has laid before us. And the reason why we ought simply not to be disappointed or be discouraged is not simply because at times we can't find the words, but we come to this place and it is here at times we find those words. In my own life, when I grow, great thanks to God for the priesthood, 
where I never respect the words that I groan, the words I seek to express. It is in the celebration of this great Eucharist, attending on God's Word, listening to it, meditating upon it, praying upon it, that I then find the words to express. This is what we do. This place where we come here is like the fountain and source of wisdom from which we who are mere babes, mere children, draw forth the words, the strength, the courage to come before God as we always do, and we ought to do, and should do, fruitful, full of praise, full of thanksgiving, for a God who not only brought us into existence, he supports us, he maintains us, he preserves us, even unto the end. So he does in life, so he does in death. And therefore, our prayer, coming here to celebrate, and give God thanks is the most important duty we do as Catholics. For those who believe it's useless, the reflection is not in the Word of God. It's not on prayer. The reflection is on them. Prayer is not a useful exercise. It is everything we do. And as much as breath is important to natural life, prayer, it's the Spirit of God breathing moving, driving us to do what we do best. We pray and leave everything to the one who will still maintain and preserve and will bring his creation to the purpose for which he constructed it. Be faithful and be courage. <clears throat> Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, in the seat of the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our burdens are made light by our trust in God, who hears our prayers. For those providing essential services, that their work be accepted with gratitude and that they will remain healthy and be protected from the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are called to proclaim the gospel do so with faith-filled zeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we be ever mindful of the unemployed and the underemployed and assist them with needed services and care, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed from our parish who have gone before us in faith and love, may they receive the reward for their goodness. And let us remember in a special way at this Mass, Martin Dolphin. We pray to the Lord. Lord. In the silence of our hearts, we present to God our particular intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord. God of all goodness and grace, you're always with us. Here are our intercessions based in your divine providence, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the Lord, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, our pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, grace us to make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and a drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Saint Margaret, our patron saint, and with all the saints in whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Timothy our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom, that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you all.
Let us pray. O Lord, graciously present to your people, and leave those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. But Michael, your angel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke you, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, sick and wounded souls. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thanks be to God. Thank you.